Hello everyone, this is the first video in a series of tutorials about the updated Webcon Starter applications. These are six complete IT management applications that you can download and use for free from starter.webcon.com. In this part, I will show you how to import one of these applications into your designer studio, and I will also talk briefly about dictionary processes which are used in these applications. Each individual application will have its own dedicated video tutorial where I will discuss its purpose and configuration, so keep an eye out for those in the nearby future. The applications themselves are updated for the newest version of Webcon BPS, so that is 2019.1.3 as of the making of this video, and they are yours to do with as you please. You can use them as is, straight out of the box, or expand upon and customize them to fit your needs. Even if you don't plan on using the applications, you can go through and analyze them to find examples of working configurations and ideas that you can then repurpose for your own projects. We designed the starter applications to work with a standalone installation, so if you are using the version of Webcon BPS that runs without SharePoint, you will be completely fine. And of course, if you are using the full Webcon BPS installation with SharePoint, the starter applications will work absolutely fine on them as well. So in order to import an application into Webcon BPS, in Designer Studio, you want to go to the Tasks tab and click on Import Application. Here you can select the .bpe file that contains the application that you want to import. So I want to import this change request application, so I'm going to select it and click Open. This will open the import wizard. First of all, the database version matches, so I can proceed to the next step. And this one will show me what are the contents of my application package. So inside this change request application, I have some change request process, a dictionaries process, and a document template process. In addition to these processes, I have some sort of presentation elements, which are the new elements, the new web parts that were added in Webcon BPS 2019. So I have some sort of start button, a few reports, and a dashboard. I want to keep all of these, of course, so I'm going to click on next without disabling anything. And here, if you already imported one of the applications, you'll probably already have the business entity imported. You, you don't want to overwrite it if you did any modification. And the security settings, if this is a fresh import, uh, first time you're importing this application, these will be blank, so you'll set them from scratch anyway. I don't want to overwrite e either the business entity or the security settings. I'm just going to click Next. And here is the final verification step. And once I click Next, it will begin the import. All right. so. Let's click on it and off we go. The import will take a few seconds. And once it's done, we can see a summary report of what was actually imported. So here we can see the application, the processes, the presentation was imported. The business entity already had one like that, so it did not change. And finally, I also have some sort of data source which was imported inside this application package. And click finish to close the wizard. So you can find your newly imported application on the list on the left hand side. So I'm going to select that. And since this is a blank first import, we are we want to first assign the privilege settings to the people that will edit this application. So I'm just going to enter myself. This way I'll make I'm, I can make sure that I have access to this application. So I'm going to save it. And one more thing uh, I would like to mention in this video, three of our applications have some sort of dictionary process. And I'm going to talk about them a little bit right now. Dictionaries are commonly used in Webcon BPS installations to provide values for various types of choice fields. So for example, drop-down lists or autocomplete fields. And one of the most commonly used types of dictionaries that we use are SharePoint lists. However, since we do not, in this installation, we are not using a SharePoint, we are limited to the two types of dictionaries that do not rely on SharePoint lists and instead rely on solely on Webcon BPS. And there are two schools of thought with advantages and disadvantages. The first one of these that we'll look at is the workflow instance. So the idea is that we have a very simple rudimentary workflow. Inside it, we have one single workflow instance, and that workflow instance has an item list. And this item list, of course, has some columns that store data and one row on this item list is one record of the dictionary that we can refer to. And the other type is the workflow here. We is slightly more fleshed out. We have an entire workflow that serves as the dictionary and each individual instance inside this workflow is one record and the data is stored in standard form fields. If you are interested and want to find out more about which type of dictionary is best for your solution, then I will link an article to our 
to our knowledge base in the description and also in that slidey little window in the top right corner. So you can go check it out and you can check out the breakdown of the advantages and disadvantages of these types of dictionaries. So for our applications, we decided to go with the middle solution with the, where we have some sort of workflow and one instance in this workflow is one record of the dictionary. And these workflows, they look like this. All of them, essentially, they're ext an extremely simple workflow that allows us to manage this dictionary. And they always have some sort of registration step where we enter the data that we want to find in the dictionary and we move it to the active step where it is, well, then it is considered fully part of the of the dictionary. This bottom part is kind of redundant, but if we want to, for example, cycle records and we want to make some inactive and then make them active again, we can use that. And of course, we can update them at on both of these steps. So we can update them when they're active and update them also when they are inactive. So the starter applications that use dictionary processes are the IT asset management, help desk and ticketing, and the change request applications. Each of these three applications and the three other ones that don't use dictionary processes will have their own video tutorial, so please look forward to those and please watch them if you would like to import and use these applications. That's it for this video, see you in the next ones and goodbye.